Hey there, what is up, plant community? If you like my videos, go ahead and give me a like, share, and subscribe, and thumbs up. It really helps me out, it helps the channel out, and also, Merry Christmas whenever you're viewing this. Just Merry Christmas in general, because, well, it's the month for it. So, palm tree updates for December. This, too, will include Psychaz, which I happen to forget one, so I'll be right back. Alright, well, I brought him out now, so we're good. Alright, let's start with updates of the palms, and then maybe tomorrow or so, I'll start out with a update of just the uh, normal plants, like things like the cypress and also still need to do a video on the cast iron plant. So I need to make sure to do that eventually. Anyways, let's take a look at the cycads and palms. So this here is my Japanese cycad. Got a little bit of a... I wouldn't say it's a damage. I would say it's a little bit of sunburn. Because... If you don't know, it's usually cloudy. There's the sun covered up by clouds, which I don't think you guys can really see that very well. But yeah, we usually don't get much sun. We're lucky to have maybe one week with sun. Maybe sometimes it's spotty with sun, but we don't usually get a whole lot of sun whatsoever. In Indiana during the months of December. So it's cold, so things grow really slowly or not at all. So anyways, we got... We do have a little bit of fronds that did die off, but uh, that's bound to happen. I'm actually surprised uh, Mr. Indy Palms, I'm surprised his fronds haven't died yet. Not saying the top foliage, but the uh, bottom right here. But anyways, I guess there might be a difference because his is looking way better than mine. His is actually in the ground, mine's in a pot, so big difference there. So, you know, zone pushing in pots versus zone pushing in the ground can yield different results for different plants. So, keep that in mind. Now, let's look at the fishtail palm. Yeah, it's looking blah. Everything looks blah during the winter. But what matters is, is I thought I seen a new spear, but I do not. I do not. The new spear will more likely pop out during the summer. And if anything, I got the little ones down there. So the poor thing is, is just to try to keep it uh, zone pushed. Oh, well, yeah, there's a spear, maybe. Mm, nope, that's just fronds. Okay, well, it'll pop out spears eventually. I, I just got to divide it. That's the big thing here, is I just got to divide this palm so that way it can have more room in the pot to grow. It also helps me with zone pushing because all that soil around those roots keeps it uh, more warm and less exposed to the cold. So, yeah, this spring I'm definitely going to have to divide this and give some to Mr. Um, Indy Palms. So... And that's if it's still alive. I hope it's still alive. Because I'd hate... I'd hate to have to be message him and be like, uh, it died. I, I think I'd have to just buy him one at that point. Because I'd feel bad. Because I told him I'd give him one. and Gotta make sure I kind of do that. It's kind of a moral thing for me. Anyways. So yeah, he's doing... Eh-ish. Now the queen palm, the baby in it. So here's the queen palm. The thing that's concerning me is this is starting to frill out down the bottom. Now my experience, whenever palms start to frill out like this and they're not all the way um, pushed out, uh, it usually means the palm is going to die. And I hope that's not the case because I spent... $200 on this guy, and I'd hate to have him die. I mean, if he does, that's fine. I'll just have to buy a new palm, and maybe a cold hardy palm. More cold hardy. I mean, this is pretty good right here, cold hardiness, but... 
yeah, that's not the fertilizer. There's still some fertilizer in there, but there was one day where it rained and I didn't know it. I was too late to get it back in. So if it goes, it goes there. There's just not going to be nothing I can really do about that. I'll just have to get a palm that's more cold hardy. I mean, this one is pretty cold hardy. I mean, it can take temperatures down 35 degrees. It's just babying it is an issue because, um, you know, we only have eight foot tall ceilings and I don't have, you know, frost cloth or anything to protect the pot really yet. So I've just been bringing it in. I might do that tonight. Hopefully it doesn't die. Because temperatures are supposed to drop, but not too bad to where I have to bring everything indoors. I don't really have to bring much indoors. Everything I got out can withstand the cold. All right. Now we're going to look at my other cycad over here, the Dayun Spinulosum. It's, uh, it's looking good. These have greened back up because they were um, inside for a bit. We can see the old fronds are starting to yellow. This frond here is probably almost ready to go. Of course, I'll keep them on there until the springtime. So that way I can just go ahead and kind of take care of all the dead fronds on palms and cycads all at once go on Florida schedule here of trimming and then go over here we have the we have the majesty palm which a lot of people say that they can't uh, take tips down 35 degrees but yet yeah, here this one is taking tips down 35 degrees a kid came by and uh told me he liked my plants, which is always cool. I like it when people, you know, notice or they just like seeing them out here. Adds a nice little tropical, tropicalist effect to the um, environment out here. But anyways, yeah, we got some dead fronds. These fronds are old fronds anyway, so they're about to go out anyways. I'll trim these during the spring. I ain't gonna worry about them right now. Uh, that one did have a bit of green on it when I last seen it, but not now. This one still has a bit of green here, but yeah. Yeah, definitely we'll have to um, cut some soil in there. Huh, yeah, fun fact, this whole dang palm fell. Last strong winds we got. I am so getting sick and tired of these strong winds. It's... It's not even funny. I gotta be careful of the soil that goes into the palm because it could cause crown rot and that's something I don't want to avoid. Well, I do want to avoid because, well, I don't want to lose this palm. I've been growing it for about three years already and it's starting to get a little bit of trunk down there and I want this palm to be a decent showpiece and I don't I don't want it to die, you know. I guess I've kind of became a bit of an attraction out here with my tropical garden, so, you know. Anywho, yeah, it's, of course, it's looking a little black too right now, but as to be expected. The Chinese fan palm, don't know the scientific name. It'll take me a minute to learn these names. I'm not I'm not good with names in general anyways, but uh Yeah, yeah, uh it took the snow and uh we could see some of the dieback there because it did take the snow, but it's not bad dieback. I know a few years back it took the snow, it took it like a champ and it was nothing, but that's more likely because it was kind of freshly repotted. And, you know, the roots wasn't like how it probably is now inside the pot. So now I got to get maybe a bit of a bigger pot for it. So that way it can grow because, yeah, the roots are more likely touching the edges of those pot, of that pot. And uh, it needs to be repotted. So, 
I'll probably wind up doing that this spring too if I can find a big enough pot. If not, what I'll probably do, and this is a technique I've been using and it's worked a lot for plants just in general, is I'll just take it out, tickle the roots, see where the roots are, and uh, lift it a little higher in the pot so that way it can just grow and be fine until next year. Okay, here we have my Trachycarpus fortunii, or Chinese windmill palm. Uh, doing good. These here are all the new fronds. These are two old fronds that were grown in a greenhouse in shade. You can see the difference. Those are more out there more, and these are more compact. I'm um, doing good. It's taken colder than what I allow my Chinese fan palm over here to take. It's took a frost and everything, so doing doing really well. Doing good. We got a new spear coming up here, which is always good, always wonderful, always needs some new fronds. And more likely these two will just die off and I'll just trim them during the uh, springtime like I will with all my palms. Yeah, if, if this guy dies, I might just get another uh, particularly cold-hardy species of palm that I can mainly keep out here and protect in a pot because eventually I'm going to have to get bigger pots for some of these palms and I'm not just going to be able to bring them all in. I'm going to have to find ways of protecting them, which I've got a strategy. I got a strategy, especially if they start getting trunks. I gotta start thinking about that, you know. If they get a big trunk on them, I, I gotta eventually protect those because I can't bring them in. My ceilings are only eight feet tall, so yeah, I gotta, I gotta think about that too. I gotta think about the future, you know. So I, I like queen palms, don't get me wrong, but I, I gotta think about. What's going to happen if they get too big? So, you know, if it dies, I'm definitely just going to get another species of palm. I might palm, palm, palm. And uh, think about maybe getting another fan palm species. Thinking about getting the uh, European fan palms because they just grow at a much slower rate. And yeah, that would probably more likely be my best bet, is to get palms that grow more slower, so that way I can keep them for longer. Yeah. I mean, that palm, it stayed in a pot like this for three years, so that's not... I mean, it's decently fast-growing, but not fast, fast-growing like the queen palm here is. So we'll go around back now and look at the plants around back. All right, now we're around back. All right, so that's my ladyfinger palm. Fun fact, I found out that they actually went extinct in the wild a long time ago. They were native to China. A very interesting fact, Sarah. I looked it up because I wanted to see what they looked like in the wild because uh, I wanted to eventually pot them up and maybe either make them look like this or something. But yeah, um, I just wanted to see them, what they look like growing in the wild. And I couldn't find any pics, so I guess they went extinct a long, long time ago. Probably when we were still using crossbows, bow and arrows, and swords, but, uh, yeah, I guess they were just, um, I guess what happened to the ladyfinger palm is they took them and they decorated, like, temples and palaces and the homes, and when they did that, they just uh, winded up wiping out the species that were wild. And there was a guy, I guess, who kept the species. Loud car. Freaking annoying. Boom, boom, boom. Stupid. I can't even hear the music. That's, that's all you hear is a vibrating car. It's just dumb. Anyways. But yeah, I guess you won't find these in the wild, only in cultivation now, because I guess a guy kept 
the species and just gradually cultivated them. And that's why we still see them today. And that's why we still have them just as house plants and decorating in malls and things like that. Because uh, you won't see them in the wild anymore. Sad story for us, Palm, that it did die in the wild. So, yeah, interesting fact there, but it's doing, it's doing good. We got a spear here wanting to pop out. A new frond. Got some tips here that are kind of damaged. And for me, that's all right. For some people, it's not satisfying, so they cut them off. I don't care, honestly. I prefer a wild look on a palm, so... Unless it gets too bad where a whole frond dies, and yeah, I'll cut the frond off. But, I mean, I don't know. Some palms look good with skirts, but some, eh. And then we got my bamboo palm, which also needs a repot. A lot of these palms needs a repotting, which I got a bit of a bigger pot I can put that in. That ain't gonna be no worries. Um, yeah, beautiful palm. One frond on this one has died. But the other fronds are doing particularly good. I only let it see temps down to 35 degrees Fahrenheit. That is doing really well. Just got to repot it is the only issue. But like I said, that won't be no problem. Get a fancy pot, pot it up because I usually keep it by the doorway along with this palm. And, you know, it's kind of like a tropical walkway or whatever. So... Yeah, that's probably what I'm going to wind up doing with this one uh, next year. This summer, anyways. And now I'm out here because I forgot one plant <clears throat> I go ahead and include. Because it kind of looks like a palm. So I just go ahead and include it, and that is this guy. This is my Cordyline Australis. Also doing really good out here. Um, we do have some dead leaves on the bottom here. Um, but again, I'll clean that up during spring. I ain't worried about it right now. I'll just clean each plant up one by one out here. But yeah, doing really good. Trying to get a uh, better trunk on it. The more trunk, the more cold hardy they are. This guy, too, is already rooted in that pot really well. Again, I'm probably going to try to use the same method because you can't really trim the roots on these. I find whenever you trim the roots on a Cordyline Australis, whether or not it's a green one, a red one, you trim those roots, they eventually die. They just slowly decline in health, and they just die. So I'm going to do everything I can to avoid trimming the roots. Uh, but yeah, yeah, these guys you don't normally see here in, uh, my town or just in Indiana in general growing like this. Well, really, you don't see none of the things I grow in Indiana like this, maybe as annuals, but you don't see them with trunks like the Cordyline Allstros here. If they do, they're usually already pretty mature, so. Or they've managed to overwinter them, and they're going to bring them back out, and they treat them as a house plant, bring them back out during the spring and summer. But, uh, yeah, looking good. I'm glad I've been, uh, <clears throat> sorry about that. I'm glad I've been growing it for a minute. I think this is either, uh, Okay, I really thought that truck was coming down this way. I think this is a three, maybe four-year plant, four-year dedication right here. Uh, yeah, looking very good, though. Very uh, happy to have it. Of course, they do better in the ground, but I can't plant things like this in the ground because uh, maintenance would have a hissy fit. Trust me, if I could, I'd zone push a lot better. Half of these palms are cold-hardy like the trachycarpus. You know, a lot of these plants would be in the ground. That Dione spinulosum over here, that cycad, yeah, a lot of these would be protected in the ground. You wouldn't even see them out. They'd be kept in boxes until it gets too warm. Then they'd be open back up. But yeah, the most of my zone pushing is, is I keep them out for most of the year. And uh, if it warms up, I bring them out. And then if it gets too cold, I take them in. That's my protection. That's about the max that I do there. Because I can't put them in the ground, so. 
I mean, I could put, like, shrubs and things like this, like that guy over there. I'm only going to be able to let him get so big that I'm just going to have to trim it. Which sucks, because it loses that mop look, which I really like. Anyways. Yeah. So, that's the update on my palm trees. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, have a good rest of the day, guys. And Merry Christmas to you all.